Unscrewed TV, New Zealand's most passionate internet wine show. And I'm going to do about 10, maybe 12 Pinot Noir episodes, kind of uh, pretty close together, hosting a Pinot tasting tonight. So I've got all the big guns coming out, especially kind of uh, this puppy from the Wiper. And I've got all the four regions covered from um, New Zealand. I'm not including Hawke's Bay and I'm not including Auckland and Gisborne either. It's just the Marlborough, Martinborough, Whiteborough and Central Otago. And so I thought I'd kick it off with probably one of the, uh, well it certainly is Whiteborough's flagship winery, Pegasus Bay. And this is the, the Prima Donna. And this is the, the top one, sits so about but anywhere between 80 and and $100. So not an everyday kind of drinker and pretty expensive for some of the Pinots coming out of New Zealand, but you get probably pretty good value seeing as this is their, their heart and soul, this is their flagship wine. 2009, good vintage down in, in the White Pro. Classic kind of vintage. Uh, slightly low on the yield, but you know, kind of uh, puts all the kind of fruit concentration in the other grapes. So this is off all their, all their own roots. And what I mean by that is that in um, the mid 1850s, there was a little pest that came across from America into the, the vineyards of France called Phylloxera. And a little bug lives in the ground, kills your vines eventually. And so what they did is because it came from America, they used American roots and they grafted the vines on top. Some little clever scientist um, did this and so because the roots of the American vines were already resistant to the phlox or a bug So but these are all on their own roots and some may argue that yep, yeah, you get much better purity from them being on their roots um, On their own roots others may say that it doesn't matter what the rootstock is. It's the vine the fruit blah 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 Very subjective On this you can it is it's quite a quite a big wine, a substantial wine, but it does have some finesse. It's got it's quite layered on the nose, and what I mean by that is that you get fruit, you get savory, you get minerals, all of those things. You do get a bit of almost kind of bacon fat there as well. Dried cured meat is is what I get, along with the kind of black brie, black currant. It's more black for me. A hint of uh, yeah that that meat coming through along with some kind of sandstone characters as well, kind of dark cherry. Two thousand nine, three years old. I get this kind of tangy grippiness from the the tannin, which is noticeable, yet smooth. You get all the fruit at the front, but it, it it's pretty seamless in transition through the palate. You get the fruit, then you get the savouriness, then you get the mineral kind of character there. But it is harmonious, and despite it this being their, their, their premium wine, this is still approachable now. I only just opened. This will undoubtedly open up a lot more than what it is at the moment, make it more expressive. And winemakers and, and marketers tend to be on the conservative side, saying kind of five, 10 years. I think this wine would probably go 15 years past, past vintage. So given that uh, it's 2012, kind of like another, another 12 years. Just got all the classic hallmarks of a good, very, very good wine. So despite its price point, you do get value for money when, if you compare it to kind of a wine of similar standard and standing from France. Uh, I've got to say that it's kind of 92, 93 points, down good. And it's worth spending out on the special occasion of trying to get some.